good morning dear students in the last module we had discussed about the dot product of the vector in connection with that i had told you that when a vector is multiplied with a vector what product will be otherwise what will be the nature of the product that is coming there whether it is going to be a scalar or a vector depends upon the interaction of the two vectors during the course of the product there this multiplication this interaction between the vectors is to be studied like that because essentially vectors are physical quantities they are not simply mathematical quantities there there is more than mathematics in that in a way so therefore we have got two types of products one is scalar product which we had discussed uh, putting a dot between the two vectors that is a symbol which tells you that the product is going to be a scalar a dot b itself is a scalar a is a scalar vector b is a vector but a dot b is a scalar remember the value of which we had given as a b cos theta this is the cos phi we said this is the definition here a b though vector they are vectors this very representation itself is it is neither a nor b it is a scalar of this value now similarly when a vector interacts with another vector and produces a new product as a vector quantity which is also a physical quantity with magnitude and direction then how should it be what will be the nature of that uh, product what will be its magnitude what will be its direction what are its properties we will be studying that here in this way to show the contrast between that from this product we write that as a cross b when you put like this it means the product is vector now so in other words it is a different vector that's what our present module is we call it as cross product let us discuss this in more detail to be in simple definition about this product if a and b are two vectors and multiplied such that a vector comes we call the cross product a new vector c this vector has a direction it has a magnitude the direction and the magnitude are given like this magnitude is given by a b sin phi where phi is the angle between the two vectors if there are two vectors like this a and b with an angle between them as phi the product will be a b sin phi this is the magnitude what will be the direction we said it is a vector so what will be that direction in simple words to be written in the notation of unit vectors we must write this as c into c cap direction of c cap is c cap means unit vector in the direction of c what will be that direction that is going to be defined as perpendicular to both a and b that means if a and b are in one plane suppose is along x axis y axis x y plane otherwise if the, the, any angle in the x y plane there like that then you will find the vector c which is the product of these two vectors will have a direction perpendicular to both that means it must be in another plane it won't be in the same plane it will be perpendicular to the plane containing both a and b that is what c is or c cap is so that is what is to be understood here so this direction of the cross product is now to be known is to be defined direction means it is very very Uh, precise you have to again put it so what will be the direction in one word to say initially we say the product vector or vector product will have a direction perpendicular to both the vectors a and b or we can say per perpendicular to the plane containing both the vectors a and b then again there are two directions for that one is up like that and there is down like this 
it can be down also like this. If you see in the same line, if you consider this is a plane, it is like that. Like for example, if I show the plane containing the uh, A and B on this file here in this plane, horizontal plane, then the C can be, C will be perpendicular direction here, perpendicular to the plane containing these two vectors. That is what is represented in the figure. Again, if you go in the upward direction from here, from the origin like this, that is one direction and another thing is a downward direction also can be there like this. This is also perpendicular to both the plane, at the same time the direction is downward. So, in such a case, we have to mention the, the, the direction much more precisely. Well, both are perpendicular to the plane anyway. anyway. So, to give that to direction, you know direction is to be given with reference to something. That is why the definition is given like this. If you consider the angle being measured from A to B, if you take A cross B, if you are multiplying that A cross B, suppose as I told you the horizontal plane is like this, A is, so for example, A is along my fingers, straight fingers, B is along this, I am uh, measuring the angle from A to B like what I have shown there, the angle phi is from this fingers to the thumb there like this, I will show the hang probably is better to understand like this. This is suppose in the B direction, this is in the A direction, A, B angle is here. Then if you put the third, if you put the right hand with the fingers wrapped in the direction of the measurement of the angle, that means if I am measuring the angle from A to B, I put the wrap like this, the direction of this thumb, right hand thumb gives you the direction of the vector C. The same thing when you consider here, it is going to be like this. So, always you must consider the smaller angle. Again, when you say the angle between these two vectors, there is a smaller angle here, there is a larger angle also here. So, we consider smaller angle only in the definition. So, the vectors A and B are in a plane such that the smaller angle between them is phi. The direction of measurement of the angle is from A to B. Then, the direction in which the thumb directs showing the wrap of the angle in the direction of the measurement of the angle, that gives you the direction of the vector C. That means, the purpose. for example, if the uh, vector A is along this fingers, straight fingers and B is along the thumb here, the angle is like this here, then naturally the value of C will be having a direction perpendicular to the plane of my hand here, given by the right hand rule like this. This is what is called right hand rule. So, that is what you must understand, right hand rule. The direction of thumb gives you. Suppose you take the angle, the, uh, this also can be shown in a different way, so in a slightly different way here. If you imagine a screw, I think you know the screw. <coughs> Suppose there is a screw like this, suppose there is a screw like this and it is right hand screw that means when you drive the screw like this in this direction, the screw advances in this way suppose. So, you drive the screw like this, it advances in the direction there. If you got the two vectors in the plane of the screw head on the top of the head of the screw, then if you got two vectors like this A and B in the plane such that you turn the screw from A to B in the direction of the angle between them like what you have shown here, then you will find the screw will advance in the direction of C. So, this is also given as right hand screw rule we can say, sometimes it can be given like that also right hand screw. If you do the same thing the other way, if you measure the angle from B to A, it will be like this. If this is phi, that is going to be minus phi. 
So we measure from the other direction now. You will find the that is when the rotation is made in this direction like this. You will find the screw will come out. It is going to come out now. So it is going to come out in that direction. That means the the direction of movement of the screw will be down like this. So this is going to be in the direction of opposite to the upward direction. So minus that is plus. This is minus. That's why we say this direction is minus c if this is plus c there. So you have to understand therefore the two directions. But the magnitude may be same. A B sin phi, but when you write, we write like this: A cross B is A B sin phi into C cap. B cross A that is from B to A. You are putting B first and then A. So then what happens is you write this as B A sin phi. In the direction of minus C cap, it essentially amounts to minus A B sine phi C cap. This minus indicates the opposite direction anyway. So this automatically means mathematically for us, A cross B is not equal to B cross A. They are different. You can see that A cross B is equal to minus B cross A. Unlike in the case of the dot product, whether you put a cross b, a dot b, or b dot a, the same thing there. Here, a cross b is not the same; it is opposite to that. That is what the definition of the cross product is. So, when two vectors are multiplied to give a vector as their product, the product will have a magnitude given by a b into the sine of the angle between them, and the direction being. Perpendicular to the plane containing them, given by the right-hand rule, we can say. So, like that, we can mention that. So, that is what the entire definition of the cross product of the vectors is. What follows from this definition? How to get this uh, in physically in various examples? We can see into that here. Just now, as I have shown you here in the screw example, when you rotate the screw in one direction. You require to rotate the screw. What do you require? You require a force. There is you apply a force like this to rotate like that. That means you are applying a force here on the screw head here. You put a screwdriver and turn like this. Say. So this distance and this force together they bring about what is called a physical quantity called a torque. Torque means it is R cross F. R is the distance at which you are applying. Say the from this from this point we consider that R this is the vector from here to there. F is from there, and R cross F R is a distance vector, position vector there, radius vector we call it, and F is the force vector. Multiplying these two, you are getting a new physical quantity torque we call it with a vector sign. We write like this in this notation. Just like the example I gave you for the dot product there, there also force and distance only are there, but that's a displacement vector. It is essential distance, mathematically speaking. So the distance with the force with a dot product gives a scalar called work done there. The same force with another distance vector, which is here called a radius vector, in product there, what comes is a torque, a physical quantity, which has got both magnitude and direction, a vector quantity. That's why it is given like this. By definition, torque is also. You can see now, torque is nothing but R F and sine of the angle between them. Like that, we will write. By definition, the magnitude of the torque will be like that. R F sine. Well, you will be knowing about these examples much more in detail when you go into the respective topics in your physics in discussion in the course of your syllabus. What shall we know more about this further? We can see here. I will put the result here. For reference, we call it as A B sine phi C cap, or you can call it as the entire thing as vector C. Anyway, so this is what the cross product definition is. Now suppose this angle is zero, then what happens? See, when phi is equal to zero, suppose. 
A cross B. This magnitude, I'm talking about this. What happens to that? It becomes A B sin zero. Means zero. Sin zero is zero. That means the cross product of two vectors becomes zero when the angle between them is zero. When will be the angle between them is zero when both are in the same direction? When they are parallel. When A is parallel to B. The angle between them is zero, so the cross product of two parallel vectors vanishes; it becomes zero. That is one thing we can see. Similarly, suppose when phi is equal to pi by two, ninety degrees. In this case, A cross B on the same lines. If you study here, it is A B sine ninety. Sine ninety is one. Therefore. This becomes simply equal to AB. That means if the two products, the two vectors are at right angles to each other, like this, the cross product becomes maximum value. It assumes maximum value there. You know, the ratio of sine of an angle gets maximum value when sine is 90. That is one. So you will get maximum value here. This is what you have to understand. See the nature of that means getting maximum. The uh, uh, product value from the cross product is only when the angle between them is equal to 90 degrees. In the example I gave just now, if you are trying to get a torque from use, by using a force, to get maximum torque for the application, you better you have to apply such that the radius vector and the force are at right angles to each other. Then you will get maximum thing. That's what you do. In, you are driving a bicycle. You hold your uh, handle of the bicycle like this, bike whatever it is. So when you want to turn it, you will apply. Force like this, so the distance between them is perpendicular to the force direction what you are applying there, so it becomes maximum torque in that case. So like that, the cross product property can be understood. You can see the contrast. In the case of dot product, when the two vectors are perpendicular, the cross product becomes the dot product becomes zero. Mm. Hope you remember that. I'll show it here for your reference. A dot B is equal to zero, then A is perpendicular to B. A cross B is equal to zero. Then A is parallel to B. See the contrast for remembrance. Similarly, A dot B is A B maximum when theta is equal to zero. Here, A cross B magnitude is maximum when theta is equal to ninety. See the contrast. So this is what you have to remember: the difference between, or the contrast between the dot product and the cross product. Then, about the commutative property now, like what you have seen in the case of dot product, a cross b. Just now I have told you is not equal to b cross a. A cross b is equal to minus b cross a. I have just now given the reasoning for that. Remember that it is minus b cross a. Therefore, they are not commutative. Product cannot be multiplication of the vectors is not commutative in the vector product. Then distributive, you can see a cross b cross c. Suppose a cross b. Cross C means it depends upon how you do it now. There are two products here. You can do A cross B cross C, or you can do A cross B cross C. If you see like that here, this A cross B is a different vector. B cross is a different vector. So these two things can never be equal. So this sort of association is not allowed. Then what about this association? A cross B plus C. What about this rule? How do you now do the multiplication? B plus C is one vector. It will be in the same plane as B. Then you can write this as A cross D. This D, this vector is D. This can be written as A cross B. 
plus a cross c. This is allowed. This is plus here. So, you can multiply the cross products a b and then a c then add both of them. That is valid, but this is not valid. You can know the proofs yourselves by just putting the definition the following the statements which come there. Take practical example and you will know it more clearly. So, like this the associative property is only allowed to certain stages of plus and minus, but not that. Similarly, even in this case you cannot reverse the order now a cross b a cross c it must be in the same order. You cannot say b cross a or a c cross a you cannot put like that. You cannot change the order you remember that because just now we have told that they are not commutative. Then what about the multiplication of two vectors cross product of the same vectors now like what you have seen there let us examine here also a cross a. a cross a is two vectors in the same direction you can see that therefore, it is 0 a cross a is always 0 it vanishes there. Then next thing in the context of what I said now the parallel vectors now let us go to unit vectors and see what is i cross i just now I told you a cross a is 0. So, i cross i also must be equal to 0 because i and i both are along the x direction only they are perpendicular to each other. Similarly, if you take j cross j even that is equal to 0. Similarly, you take k cross k you know i j k are the vectors in x y z directions. So, it is along x axis same vectors are there. So, it is 0 here y axis same vectors are here 0 k is parallel to k again here also it is 0. So, that is what coming up there. If you see the contrast again with the dot product you can remember what we have got there. We have got same vectors here we got one here we got one here we got one here. See the other way i cross j is very interesting to know here i cross j is having 1 into 1 oh, unit of magnitude of this one is 1 this also 1 and sin angle between them is 90 degrees sin 90 is 1 again this is a vector quantity because the cross this must be vector quantity. So, direction must be there what is the direction a different vector which is perpendicular to both i and j perpendicular to both i and j therefore, we can take this i is along the x axis j along the y axis. So, perpendicular to both means we take z axis. So, therefore, you will get this as j. Therefore, we get this as k. Magnitude is 1, direction is perpendicular to both. So, C cap is that means perpendicular to both i and j, that means it is k. Instead of C, we can write k here because we know we have already defined a vector quantity with unit magnitude in z direction. So, we have put it here. In the same way, now you can see j cross k. j cross k is i on the same lines. Then k cross i naturally third vector that is j will come there. This is ok as far as this order is concerned. This is following the right hand order just now like we what we told if the i is in this direction j in the direction k in the direction then perpendicular to this you are measuring from i to j, j to k, k to i that order is ok. I will show the order i, j, k. So, i to j, j to k, k to i. You follow this order i cross j gives you k, j cross k gives i and k cross i gives j the third one will come. If you go in the same order of i, I cross Suppose you reverse the order now, 
Just now like what we have said in the case of the complete property, if the order is reversed, you will get the reverse vector. Suppose you write j cross i. This also will have magnitude 1 only. So, magnitude is 1 only. Direction will be minus of that what you got here. That is k, so this must be minus k. So, opposite to the earlier one. So, if the order changes i to j, i cross j is k, j cross i is minus k. That means, i cross j k, j cross i minus k. This is minus order. This is plus order. This reverse goes there, it will become minus order now. Become in the reverse order, it becomes minus. This is positive. So, therefore, on the same lines you can now say uh, k cross j. j cross k is i. So, what will be this? Minus i. Similarly, i cross k. This is j. So, this will be minus j. So, remember this. Whenever you encounter this unit vectors in the cross product, you will have to have this in your mind and work out. Now, suppose a vector is given or two vectors are given in the unit vector notation. You are asked to find out the cross product of them. Then, how will you do it? Let us evolve a formula for that also here. Vector A is given like this. Suppose, A x i a y j a z k and another vector is b it is b x i b y j b z k suppose two vectors are given like this you are asked to find out a cross b how will you go about it algebraically multiply just like we following the uh, distributive law what we said now, let us do that way here. So, A x i plus A y j A y j plus A z k cross b x i b y j b z k. Try to multiply now. With each term you have to multiply the rest of the three terms, you will get nine terms now. Let us see here. First one is a x i multiply with this b x you have i cross i there. Then A x B y we have I cross J there. Then A x B z I cross K here. Be careful following the order of multiplication. I cross, I cross only must do. We are multiplying with this one, all the three there. Then next one second one a y b x j cross i plus a y b y j cross j plus a y b z j cross k Then third one, last one. A z b x k cross i. A z b y k cross j. Then A z b z k cross k. Multiplication is complete now. 
Now we have to evolve the values of these cross products. Here you must be careful in the order of following inputting third vector there. I cross I is 0, J cross J is 0, K cross K is 0. Parallel vectors we have shown just now they are 0. Now if you come to I cross J, AX BY here, I cross J is K. We have similarly another one, I cross J here, but it is opposite, J cross I here. This is minus K, these two things. This is K, this is minus K. So that minus, if I bring it here, I can write this as minus AYBX into K. See here. Then, this one, AX BZ, I cross K, K cross I here. Again, two things are there. K cross I is the order, I cross K is reverse order. So, that becomes minus J, this becomes J. So, I put here AZ BX minus AX BZ with uh, k cross a, so it becomes j here. Then third term, k cross j, k cross j i here, and the k cross j is there, that is j cross k. So, j cross k is plus in the order, i j k order, k cross j is reverse order, this becomes minus. So, we can write this as a y b z minus a z b y into y. So, this is the answer for the product there. So, you have to remember this equation for a cross b. This is the answer for that. One i component, one j component, that component also will come. I just only rewrite this because it is easy way of remembering. Coming to that, I write about this one. I will show the easy way of remembering it here. Because such an equation, you can always make a mistake if you remember that way. I rewrite this equation A cross B is equal to, I write I first here, I into AYBZ. minus A Z B Y. That is I. Second one is J. I put a minus sign. Take minus J out. So, this comes first now. A X B Z minus A Z B X. It is the same term. I wrote this first by taking minus out like this for convenience. You will see what the convenience is plus k into a x b y minus a y b x. So, that is the answer for this. Same thing is I did it on there here. If you remember this, if you know a little of algebra and mathematics, you must be remembering one standard equation. This equation for determinant like this, you can write the determinant here, the entire thing as i j k a x a y a z b x b y b z. You expand the determinant, you will get that equation only. So, this way you can remember easily because you know how to expand this determinant by the knowledge of our mathematics. That is why I have taken minus here because second term the determinant becomes as minus always. So, you can see if you want to write this this way A cross B you want to write A is this B is this put the vectors new vectors on the top first one in the first row here second one in the second row here. Then write the equation for that if you want to write I component close this and that column 
सर रो ए वाई बी जेड माइनस बी वाई ए जेड कैन सी दट मल्टीप्लाई लाइक दिस एंड देन सब ट्रैक दर वन सिमिलरली एवरी वेयर सपोज यू वॉन्ट जे कॉम्पोनेंट यू आर पुटिंग माइनस टेन ऑफकोर्स बिकॉज सेकेंड टर्म देन यू आर क्लोजिंग दिस कॉलम एंड दट रो ए एक्स बी वाई मल्टीप्लाई फ्रॉम हियर टू देयर ए एक्स बी वाई बी जेड सॉरी एक्स बी जेड देन बी एक्स ए जेड तो माइनस है इनमें Similarly, you can understand now the third one. If you want to write the third component now, you have to keep this column closed. Multiply this. A x b y, a y b x. So like this, multiplication can be done, and you can put them there, and you can easily remember the value. So if you are asked to find out what is a cross b, you can put the answer in the form of the determinant also, unless you separately want the total value. Otherwise. If it is in the variables like this, it is this value. Any vector can be used here. You to find the, any two vectors can be used here to find the cross product like that. So this is the advantage of putting it like that. We take a practical example, then we will know how much it will be like that. You are given two vectors like this. You are asked to find out a cross b. Suppose, how will we find? You must write the determinant now. That is, i, j, k, components of the first one, three minus two one, one minus one plus one. determinant is written in a way the answer is complete in itself here but to want to know the actual value how much is the magnitude of this also then you have to work it out so we will try to put the answer this is i into like what i said this row and this column this row and this column are kept closed multiply with this minus 2 minus of minus 1 into 1 that is plus 1 minus 1 Minus two into one, that is minus two. Minus one into one, that is minus one. With the minus in between. Similarly, j with second term, so with the minus sign there. Three into one, this is minus one. Three, three into one, three into one here. One into one here. For finding j, the first row and this central column are closed. Three into one minus one into one. That is one. Then k. For k, we have to close the last column. So we have three into one with a minus sign. Minus three. Minus half. Minus two into one. Minus two. Come this. Now work out. Minus two plus one. This minus one. Minus two plus one. It is minus one. Then minus here. J. This three minus one. Two J. Then here. This is plus two minus three, so it is minus one. That means k. So it is minus i minus two j minus k. So this is the vector we have got. This is the cross product of a and b. So this you want to find out now the magnitude of this a cross b. It is square root of one square of this one. That is minus one square. Plus minus two square, plus minus one square. That is square root of one plus four, five plus one six. Root six will be the answer. 
Now, what about this vector a cross b? This vector will be perpendicular to both a and b. That is, remember, you remember that. It must be perpendicular to both a and b. So, if you want to, if you divide this by this magnitude, just like what we said, when a vector is divided by its magnitude, what will you get is unit vector in the direction. So, you can say here, unit vector in the direction of unit vector in the direction of a cross b is equal to a cross b by a b. So, what is that? See here, minus i minus 2 j minus k that is the vector a cross b magnet of this one that is square root of 9 plus 4 plus 1 14 9 plus 4 plus 1 square of this square of this square of that added similarly here it is 1 plus 1 plus 1 root 3 1 plus 1 plus 1 under root. So, that is root 42. So, it is 1 by root 42 if you say i plus 2 j plus k minus 1 by root 42 I just took minus out. This is going to be unit vector perpendicular in the direction of a cross b. That is what you have to see. Well, finally, before I conclude this, tell you another important and interesting thing here. The vectors are here, a cross b. We have said a cross b has magnitude equal to a b sin phi. Let us examine for a while the geometry of this here. If you think of drawing a line perpendicular parallel to this one and draw a parallelogram here with A and B as vectors, say this is A drawn parallel to this, so this also b in magnitude, this will be a in magnitude. See this perpendicular drawn here. Call this as O for you to understand P Q R P Q R I put here. In what I wrote there, O P is A, O Q is B. Then Suppose I draw a perpendicular here, what is Qn? You can say it is B sin phi, that is it. So, OP is simply A magnitude, OQ magnitude is simply B. Now, you can observe here, draw the area of the parallelogram from the figure, figure there, area of the parallelogram O P R Q. It is always the base O P into the height that is Q n that is the formula for the area of the parallelogram. Incidentally, if you see that here it is A this is B sin phi. This is nothing but magnitude of A cross B. Understand? So, you can see from this that the magnitude of a cross product of two vectors will be equal to the area of the parallelogram of which these two sides are the adjacent sides of the parallelogram given by the vectors A and B. If two vectors are represented as the adjacent sides of a parallelogram A and B, then the cross product A cross B will be equal to the area of the parallelogram in magnitude.
see the geometrical significance how nice it comes. So, this way we can apply our knowledge of the cross product and in the unit vector representation cross product can be known and the physical problems becomes much simpler when you try to apply in this case. You can apply this knowledge and in your problems numericals given in your module also and then try to get to the grip of it. Thank you.